Hi there and welcome to the Barbara Young channel. Now I'm just about to start my next project which is the Quixo 4102 which is it says here Mrs Top or and Tunic. So that is that pattern and I'll be looking to do I think it's this one Top A which is a little bit shorter. So I'll just have a quick read of what it tells me about this uh, this pattern. It's a button front top and tunic with extended shoulders. V-shaped neckband, shirring on skirt at waistline and front and back shoulder yokes with bodice pleats. Tunic B has tied back belt. So it has a little belt part put in it. I don't know if that will show up, the um, line drawings on there. But, uh, but yeah, it looks quite a nice little top. So button up front, it's fine. Um, with a V-neck, which is what I quite like. I prefer to have a, a V-neck like the... This, well, this isn't technically a V-neck, it sits more like that, but I never do it up all the way. So, there you go. Um, fabrics, it says it is for crepe de jean, chalice, voile and cotton types. Well, I'm going to be using cotton, um, so we'll see how that sits. Probably, it's a cotton poplin, I think, so... A little bit different maybe it won't quite have the drape that maybe this is meant to have but I know it looks like quite a quite a structured um, top anyway so what materials am I going to be using well to start off with the mock-up which I'm going to do mock-up is going to be this this is just a duvet cover that I've taken apart and that's what I'll use to make the mock-up because it is almost certainly going to be a poly cotton of some sort so it's going to be very similar to the material that I'm going to be using the material that I'm going to be using for this is this stuff now I have shown this before I think when I was um, um, one of my Friday sews I was going through some of my projects and this is one of the projects I was talking about and it's got this lovely um, lima print on this I don't know what colour that is I'm calling it coral but I'm not sure that that is it, but um, that's what we're going to be using. And it is a cotton poplin, as far as I'm aware. Let's have a quick look on that. Yeah, 100% cotton, looks like a cotton poplin, so that's brilliant. That's my material, and I suppose first things first is to get the instructions out and give them a good read. And the instructions for this uh, quick sew are very much typical, all the big ones, um, they all come like this, get um, four pages, with the, um, the back page being empty, as usual, um, I just think if you're going to make four pages, fill them all up, give us more instructions, you've got the room for it, so why waste it, but there you go, <laughs> a wasted piece of paper for I'm saying, but never mind. Pattern pieces of which on here, um, and, and basically every piece is used, except for the fact you've got this tie piece on for pattern B. I'm going to be doing pattern A, all the normal instructions, telling you about cutting, um, material layout, um, which way it is, layout code, um, what size of material you've got, depends on how you're going to cut it out I suppose really. Um, that's quite simple, tunic A, tunic B, and then a few pieces of instructions about stitching and sewing up. And then we come on to the actual instructions, which always starts with the interfacing. There's a bit of interfacing to do on some facing pieces. And then we start off by doing, hmm, there's some pleats to do on the bodice by the looks of it to start with. So. That'll be number one or number two. Um, and then it looks like I've got to start on the yoke. There's a, there's a yoke piece. Looks like there's a yoke piece on front and back. Um, some more pleats in the bodice, in the bodice back section. Then we've got the yoke. This is the outer yoke. Um, and then you put it together by the looks of it front and back together at shoulder seams and then on the right side of the body present um oh ah yeah here the yoke does have a facing piece so you've got the front yoke pieces and the back yoke 
both have facing pieces that have got to go onto um, the main garment. Again, with that funny way of stitching on and rolling up, and then at some point you're going to turn the whole thing inside out. So when I showed you the material just, um, I've got some other plain material, and that is what I'm going to use to make this yoke piece with, rather than the um, material with the pattern on, and um, help save material for the main garment. Yeah, and you've got to do that, and then stitch it up, and then flip it through as you do. And then probably some top stitching on there. Next, doing the sides. Now, there are no sleeves on this, so obviously we've got um, some bias tape to cover up the, the armholes. Yep, yeah, that's as normal, sort of sensible thing. Now, on this, we've got, again, just going on, so I'm sort of casting on forward, but let's get on with the instructions as it is. Then it's some top stitching, reinforced back neck face base yeah, with some top stitching, so some stay stitching it says. Why would you stay stitch once you've already put the garment together? Never mind. And then it says the skirt piece, which is saying about putting some gathering stitches in and then putting the um, pieces together and then attaching it to the bottom of the top section. Once you've done that, then it's a case of putting the facing piece on. Now, on this, um, I'm doing tunic A, yeah, which is this. So these facing pieces, you've got that, because I've already interfaced them. Stitch on the back facing piece, stitch onto the main garment, all the way around. And then it's that thing of, oh, it looks like I've got two pit facing pieces. I've got this bit and the piece that I've interfaced. So, so actually it's double layered. So you stitch that bit on and then attach this over the top of it. I will have to take my time on this facing piece for this buttonhole section because it doesn't look quite as simple as I was expecting. Anyway, moving on to page three. Once we've got the facing piece for that, for the for the neck enclosure with the buttons, it's a case of putting the buttonholes in, putting the buttons on it. Um, now, of course, tunic B is a little bit different, and it's the same construction throughout until you get to this neck banding piece, which is a little bit different, but still quite similar. So, well, and then we're on to page page four. The invisible page. I'll probably use it to write instructions down and notes and stuff so <laughs> at least I've got a blank place to put those notes so um yeah and that's the instructions. Well I've got the pattern pieces out and it comes in two sections by the looks of it. It's got two bits here and um, I've got looks like some smaller bits. Loads of like instruction stuff here preparation, preparing pattern, oh it even gives you things about preparing the pattern actually on the pattern itself so probably cut them out and keep them. Uh, yeah we've got the, uh, the smaller pieces it looks like on this section all of your, oh the different size for the, that is the neckband for view B okay so it's all separate rather than being multi like they are like it is on for this yoke piece and the other bit so that. and the other bit I'm hoping is all the bigger stuff so let's get this opened up yep this is this is all the bigger stuff all the bigger pieces um, my other facing um, yoke piece um, front back another back um, yes and all the longer bits as well so this is in two parts so there we go all I need to do now really is to iron this and cut out the individual sections and then I'll be ready to um, start marking up material well I've got all my pattern pieces cut out 
and I've got my material ready. So all I've got to do is put the pieces on material and cut it out. And then I thought, what size am I making? Um, so I had a look at my pattern, um, my sizing, and gone through and had a look and I've decided I'm going to be making large to start with. Start there, then if it's a little bit wrong, I can always scale it down and take it down to medium. But let's see how it goes first of all, because, hmm, should have thought about this first. Well, I've got all my pattern pieces traced out. I got pinned onto material and cut out, so everything's done and ready. Only a small pile of uh, scraps from this uh, from this um, pattern, which is really quite good. Hopefully, get away without losing too much material. I know this is only the mock-up, but there you go. Anyway, next step is actually starting to sew this lot together and seeing how it comes comes together. Really, hopefully, it should be quite simple. Hmm, hopefully. Well, I've started getting the bodice together, it's come together quite well. The pattern does start off with, by saying to do these, these pleats uh, on the front here. And, well, as long as I take my time about it, they seem to go in all right, just a little bit fiddly. There's a pleat on the back as well. And like the front ones, just takes a little bit of time just to get right, but they go in quite easily, really. And then what it says is to actually um, stitch the front yokes to the front and the back yoke to the back piece and then stitch it up at the um, shoulder seams which is what I've done so far. I've just um, pinned the sides up just to get an idea of how it's sitting and how it feels and I have to admit my first consideration is that this is the large and it is well large um, I think I could probably go down a size I and mean, probably do a medium. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish doing this mock-up fully, as I intend to do, and then I'll have a better idea of how it actually is going to sit. But initially, yeah, I think this is probably a bit big because once you get this front bit on, there's going to be a piece on the front that overlaps, that, causes, that forms that um, button placket piece and also comes up and does the neck collar. Um, band on this top and so I only have to have it together to really get an idea and there is quite a bit of room also the shoulders I mean these shoulders there's not going to be no sleeve on there and I just feel that that comes down quite a bit further down than I was expecting I'd be you know take it back a couple of centimeters at least um, so yeah these feel a little bit bigger and longer than, than I would be expecting. So I may do a smaller size once I finish doing this mock-up. Well I've got the uh, yoke facing pieces in and um, got in quite well. That um, seems all right. Um, well I say it seems all right. I don't like it. It's not that it that it's not great to have this, um, the facing pieces on the, uh, the yokes but it's the way that it goes in. I don't like the order construction. Because basically what it's telling you is that you get your front pieces ready and then you attach the front yoke piece to the front. And the same with the back. The back gets prepared and then you stitch the back yoke to the back piece. And then you stitch it together at the shoulder seams. Then it tells you to get the uh, yoke facing pieces ready by stitching the front yoke facing to the back yoke facing which is effectively the shoulder seam and then you through some rolling up method you then stitch in the facing piece onto the main garment but what I've noticed is that if you do that then you are effectively sewing this seam twice and the same with the back, you've sewn that same seam twice to fix in that facing onto the yoke, on, sorry, the yoke facing onto the front and the back or onto the main, the rest of the garment. It just seems a bit odd and it seems a bit messy. I don't like it because it, to me that's, well, it's wasting time. It's why sew a seam twice? To me, just don't want to do it that way. 
so I am actually going to change the order of construction. Now one of my other tops that I do is a shirt which is the Quickso 3 Treble 5 shirt which I've made loads of which is why I looked at this and went oh yeah the yoke in there that'd be fine I'm, I'm used to doing that it's it's an easy process or easy-ish process um, and I'm I'm happy to do it I don't like the order that construction of, for this one so I'm going to change it and I'm going to do it the way as if I was making one of my shirts like you know blue shirt the way that the yoke goes in on this one because this is a yoke inside and outside yoke um, but there is just the one yoke it's just a just a goes in on the back but comes up onto the shoulder seam but to me if I was to make the front the main yoke up so I've got the back yoke and the front yoke put together and then do the same with the yoke facing then I can treat that like one piece and stitch it in in the same way I would as if I was stitching in on this pattern which to me is so much more simpler so yeah a change already on this one now I won't do that until I actually come to do the main garment but I've already taken some notes down that I'm changing the process the order construction sorry so yeah I'll carry on with this and uh, see where we go and see how it fits out the end well it's coming along I've got the um, skirt piece uh, attached on I thought it was going to be a bit tricky it was a little I suppose not delicate but I had to take my time because you've got this ruffling this ruching up to do on the bottom you've got that on both sides and on the back of that skirt piece but it went in quite well and it's lined up quite nicely and you can see that very well on the seams so the way that the skirt piece goes on actually goes on really nicely so I'm, I'm happy with that then we're on to the neck band and this front um, it's going to be the placket bit for the buttons but I've um, got an issue with this there is can't really see it on here but there is just way too much material there for this size of this um, neck band piece I'll show you on the actual pattern it'll be a bit more easy to show but if I place this over this one can you see the issue there's a bit of a gap this doesn't fill this whole length even if I put it to that side I've still only come to here and if I take off my one and a half seam allowance I've still got so in the region of about three centimeters difference in that so this just doesn't this just doesn't fit this and even if I was to go to the extra large size this still wouldn't fit onto this it's just like it's just out of scale well, I'm trying to get this neck band in, sort of neck band front placket piece, and you know what? It's not coming out very well. It tells you to um, snip these in from the back of the angle, and then it shows you that you're going to stitch this together. This is the wrong side, so that you've got it turned. Um, wrong side to me, right side that you can't see because the right side is the, the darker grey. Fine, okay, fantastic, that tells me. So I'm looking at it like that going, okay, so that's the shape it needs to be. And then I need to stitch it onto here. The notch, or the little bit we cut out, is here on the inside. Yet quite clearly, if I'm looking at this bit, that's on the outside, not the inside. So when I put this on, that looks great fine but then it tells me to do the other piece which has got the interfacing on and then that should look as it shows exactly the same as that because those two pictures are the same only this one's got the interfacing on so they're both sewn up the same way but when you come to look at it this piece has got to be turned out I'll show you on here this is the garment sorry it's a bit busy here you've got that piece I've stitched it on because it says there that's the neck band it comes round it dog legs that way 
down the front. But of course, when you put this on and you want to turn it out, think if I was turning this all the way over like that, that would be fine. But it doesn't. It sits out like that because we're going to put this piece on there because that's going to form the, the, uh, the plaque here. But because the dog leg is like that, as you can see, when I turn it out, the dog leg is now turning the wrong way. It wants to go across the front of the neck, which is wrong. What should happen is that should be more like this. The dog leg runs up and then in that way. So that when I stitch this on, I've got to stitch it on, have my notch there against the angle, have my notch there, turn this back on itself. Because then when I turn it out, the dog leg sits in the correct way. So, mm, yeah, perhaps it's just me, but it just looks wrong to me. And having stitched one bit in, it looks utterly wrong. So um, I'm going to have to pull that off, stitch this one on and see if I can sort it out. Because these instructions are a bit... Well, I've got the mock-up finished eventually. I think I've probably spent... Um, a bit more time and detail on this than I probably needed to but I wanted to really understand how this went together because I wasn't totally sure the instructions are a bit well I'll explain that in a moment but anyway it's it has come together quite nicely the body spit um, came together quite well and this well they call it a skirt part I suppose it is um, depends on how long you want it really I haven't hemmed this yet because I didn't need to hem the this mock-up but I mean, I could do quite a quite a big hem and pull it up quite a bit, or I can just put a little one on there. I've just used some safety pins at the moment just to hold it together because it should should be buttoned. But I'm not going to put buttons on this. I don't need to. Just need to understand how it comes together. Now, as far as sizing goes, this is large, and it is actually well large. As I said before, it does seem to be a little bit roomy. Uh, got you know quite a bit of room there in this but then these are gathered here and at the back let me just show you so you've got this gathering on both sides and there as well which is quite a nice detail I quite like that uh, on there but it does seem there's a lot of room especially on this shoulder here it comes down quite a bit now I know that on the picture it does show that so it comes off the shoulder quite a bit but how much off the shoulder do I actually want it to come off this just seems a bit too much but well I suppose I can fix that basically by doing the next size down so I'm going to do the medium when I actually come to make it for proper on the good material but uh, but yeah this has been a good learning learning process I suppose for understanding how to put this pattern together. Now I did have one or two issues with the collar and this button placket. Let me explain. So a quick look at some of the um, little features on this uh, top and the things that have caused me frustration. Now on the top we've got this detail, I don't know if you're really going to be able to see this, but there's some pleating on there on the top and we've also got the, um, that sort of pleat you get in the back there, which is it's, it's quite nice, nice little details there. Um, and then, like I said, the, the, um, the ruching on the skirt part, which you've got on both sides and on the back. And there's a lot more ruching on the back that gathers up a lot more than it does on the front pieces. So, but that's quite nice, a nice detail like that. Then we have the, um, the button placket and um, neckband, which all runs together and runs down and folds over itself and forms a nice, a nice uh, um, edging to that, um, to the front of the garment. Now the sleeves, they're meant to be, there are no sleeves, meant to be um, bias binding on there which I haven't done because I didn't need to it's in the mock-up but yeah that went quite nicely now the neck band um, 
didn't go on very well and I also was not happy with the way the yoke went because the way it tells you to put the yoke in on this because the yoke you've got a back yoke and the front yoke but the way it tells you to put it in is to um, effectively stitch over this part and this part twice you're doing the same, same seam twice well to me it feels that way so I'm not very happy with that so I'm going to change the order construction that way hopefully it'll come together a bit better um, and a bit quicker because I hate having to do stuff twice talking of doing stuff twice well the neck band now I was beginning to think that these instructions basically were utter by the time I'd realized what was going wrong I'd actually already stitched in the um, the neck band twice and <laughs> removed it twice so um, yeah I think it's not overly clear until you've actually tried to sew it and worked out what's happening. I'll explain on the actual pattern. What I've got is this is the um, back yoke, it's uh, cut on the seam, on the um, fold I mean. Same with the uh, facing piece for it that forms that neck band piece on the back. Now I thought that when you stitched it together you were sewing like that. I thought well it's not big enough, what, have they not done this right? I've since realised that I was wrong, so very wrong, and that actually the part that gets stitched to the back of this neck band, I know this has got seam allowance already in it, is actually this curve here, so it's actually that way, so this long curvature is what gets stitched onto this curvature here. Of course once I've realised that, I had a look at the instructions again and realised that actually they're correct. There's nothing wrong with these instructions except for me reading them. Yeah, once, once I'd worked out that actually these instructions are correct, they're just not overly clear. It sort of came together then. So, um, and eventually I got this neck band on there looking nice. Um, uh, I know I probably spent way too much time doing that, but I really, that's why I do a mock-up, so I can properly understand what's going on, and if I'm making some mistakes and errors, I can make as many as I like on this, if I have to unpick it as many times as I need to, to understand what is actually going on. So now I've done that, I can make my notes, and I know that I'm going to be making the medium size, and I know how to put that neck band and... Um, button placket um, piece in without there being any issues hopefully a little change of construction order of construction sorry for the um, yoke but otherwise I'm expecting some plain sailing when it comes to making the main garment now I was going to do this video and make it so that I did the whole lot doing the um, mock-up and then making the main garment but I've taken so long to actually understand how this goes together despite the fact it's meant to be a quick sew, well, I suppose probably easy for a lot of people, I'm going to have to put that in another video because this one's winding on quite a bit. So what I'll do is my next video will be the main make. And this video is obviously just for the mock-up, which has um, been a bit taxing really. But there you go. That's how they work out sometimes. Well, thank you for watching my video. I look forward to seeing my next video. Bye. Yeah.